Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about functional foods that if you eat enough of them have been shown to increase positive psychology, feelings of happiness, feelings of satisfaction in life, and even combat depression. The foods we're talking about are rich in compounds called flavonoids. But what I'm going to propose is that you would take a mood score at the beginning, I'll give you all of this later on, to assess sort of your state of happiness or level of depression. Eat a diet really rich in these flavonoid foods and then do a mood, the same test at the end and compare the two results to see if following a diet rich in these foods has a positive effect on you. So is there any real evidence that flavonoids have these effects? Initially, it wasn't clear whether or not people that had positive psychology were just making better food choices, because that is a known phenomenon. I mean, you know that yourself. When you're depressed, you tend to make bad food choices, and when you're happy, you often make better food choices. So was there any evidence that it was the flavonoids that were promoting the positive psychology, or was it just that we saw people with positive psychology eating more of these flavonoid-rich foods? Well, that was tested and it was found that there was a positive effect in psychology the day after people ate these foods, and it was done in a placebo-controlled way. So flavonoids do have a positive effect on psychology. But what about depression? Well, animal studies have shown flavonoids increase serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine activity in the brain. Flavonoids also have a positive effect on GABA-A receptors. In fact, in some studies, the intake of large amounts of flavonoids was found to have an equivalent antidepressant effect to imipramine and Prozac or fluoxetine, standard antidepressants. But it turns out flavonoids don't just increase neurotransmitter activity, they have several other antidepressant effects. One is that they upregulate neuroplasticity, both the generation of new synapses and within the synapses, Flavonoids exert a positive effect on the health of the synapses, what's called synaptic plasticity. And boosting synaptic plasticity is particularly important if you're facing the challenge of coming off a drug or recovering from drug use, whether it's a recreational drug or a prescription drug, particularly benzos, that cause a loss of receptor sites in the postsynaptic membrane. If this is a problem you're dealing with, a super high flavonoid diet may help to speed up your recovery. One of the ways flavonoids do this is they upregulate the production of a compound called BDNF. BDNF is a chemical the brain naturally makes to stimulate the growth of new synapses, to repair itself and maintain its existing structures. It's a central component of neuroplasticity. And we now know that boosting neuroplasticity is a key component of an effective antidepressant treatment. One of the hallmarks of depression is that there's an increase in inflammation and a decrease in plasticity, decreased levels of BDNF production. The consequence of this negative neuroplasticity balance is that you lose synaptic connections and actually lose gray matter in certain parts of the brain, key structures of the brain that control mood. As well as boosting BDNF production and upregulating neuroplasticity, flavonoids are also powerful agents to combat inflammation. They reduce inflammation in the brain and combat oxidation stress or oxidation damage. Depression occurs when the accumulative forces of toxic burden, oxidative stress, nitrosative stress, and inflammation stack up to be too much for the brain's neuroplastic ability to protect itself against these destructive forces. So you can see how flavonoids exert a multi-pronged approach to combat depression and improve the health of the brain. On the one hand, they boost BDNF production and neurotransmitter metabolism, both of which are involved in upregulating neuroplasticity. On the other hand, they decrease inflammation and oxidative stress, which are working against neuroplasticity. So flavonoids act to restore positive neuroplasticity, stimulating the growth of new synapses, synaptic plasticity, and neurogenesis, which is the growth of new cells in the hippocampus. You may or may not know this, but the brain is highly plastic. It can actually regrow gray matter. Another remarkable thing that flavonoids do is some of them exert a positive rebalancing effect on the stress physiology in the body. One of the central things in depression and several other mental health problems, including bipolar disorder, OCD, uh, possibly anxiety, although it's, it's a little more complicated, is there is this 
overactivity in the stress pathway that connects the hypothalamus to the pituitary to the adrenals to then release cortisol. This is called the HPA axis, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. When that system is overactivated and chronically overactivated, you get this excessive production of cortisol. The net effect of that is to cause a rise in inflammation in the brain. And then that inflammation attacks key structures in the brain that control mood, and if your brain's neuroplastic capabilities are insufficient to protect itself from the inflammation, which is coming from psychological stress, then you're going to start losing connections in your cortex and hippocampus more quickly than you can replace them and end up with a depressed brain. This phenomenon also plays a significant role in other mental health problems, including bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and OCD. Now, don't get depressed about that because when you set up the right conditions, reducing inflammation, boosting BDNF, feeding it the right nutrients, eliminating deficiencies and so forth, switching off stress responses, the brain is highly repairable. I myself began to experience a significant loss of synaptic connections, uh, particularly in the parietal lobes of my brain, uh, probably as a consequence of the repeated waves of high levels of glutamate that I would suffer from with the bipolar mania. I have bipolar disorder. So I experimented with a treatment regime consisting of a super high intake of flavonoids, along with other neuroplasticity boosting substances and techniques. And the results were phenomenal. As far as I'm concerned, I not only recovered the same function that I have sort of before the loss, but actually improved my brain better than it ever used to be. The brain is so highly neuroplastic, it's incredible. So where do flavonoids come from and what are you gonna eat on this flavonoid rich diet? Most flavonoids have an orange to red color. So you're gonna see them in, yes, oranges, but particularly in the skins. And I'm actually even gonna tell you how to put orange skins into a smoothie. Flavonoids are in tomatoes, sweet potatoes, blueberries, squashes, I mean the vegetable squash, goji berries, red peppers, onions, carrots, black rice, and then some flavonoids are found in green foods. So they're in spinach and green peppers, green tea, brown foods such as cocoa powder, black rice I've already said. On the website link on this post, I'll show you all the details about what you're supposed to eat and how much and some recipe tips and so forth. Also the questionnaires that you can do before and after the experiment. But briefly, this regime would consist of every day you're gonna to have to have uh, say two smoothies. In those smoothies are gonna be blueberries, orange, including the skin, red peppers, green peppers, spinach. You're also gonna eat a bowl of vegetable soup every day, which has got either lentils or sweet potatoes in it with tomatoes and red onions and chilies if you want, red and orange colored foods. You're gonna to have to eat some obligatory sweets. Yes, some sweets. You can make sweet potato chocolate fudge cake because cocoa is a very rich source of flavonoids. So make some of that, eat that every day. You're going to put together some goji berries again with cocoa powder and then blend those up in your food processor with dates and peanut butter or prunes if you don't eat peanut butter and roll them up into energy balls. And you can have these as uh, after meal desserts or as snacks with a cup of tea. And you should also be drinking a couple of cups of hibiscus tea and green tea. Uh, if you can't handle the caffeine in the green tea, then you'd get decaffeinated or maybe just skip that one. Now, something that's very important to understand is what could you expect from this type of treatment? You shouldn't expect 100% cure from depression with just diet alone. I've been practicing nutritional and function medicine for 30 years. I specialize in the treatment of mental health problems and I've never seen anybody get 100% well from major depression through diet alone. Having said that, there's evidence that moving from a junk food diet to a Mediterranean style diet may reduce depression by as much as a third or even more. Now the Mediterranean style diet does include a lot of vegetables and fruits, but it doesn't specifically emphasize flavonoids. And what you're gonna be experimenting with is to see if specifically emphasizing flavonoids, you know, on top of a decent diet, eliminating junk, can achieve better results than just a standard Mediterranean style diet. 
And if it can, you can expect results that are well worth the effort. This is an experiment. If it works fantastically well, keep going. If it doesn't, move on and try something else. If this sounds like something you'd like to try, follow the link in the description to my website, which is balancingbrainchemistry.co.uk, where you'll find all the instructions on what to eat, how much to eat, recipe tips, the self-help questionnaires, more of the science on how flavonoids work. And in due course, I'm gonna add more videos about how to deal with SIBO and other techniques to boost plasticity and combat inflammation. And if I could ask you for something back in exchange for this information, what I'd really appreciate would be comments after you've done the regime for a few weeks. You see, I know flavonoids work for me and I've experimented on them with a number of patients but I'm wanting to see if they are consistently effective in a wider audience. Now here's a really important caveat, you must listen to this. Um, there are some people that shouldn't do this regime. I'm going to put this in the website and also in other videos. If you have poor motility or motions through your small intestines so that after you've absorbed all the nutrients from food, the fiber residue that's left lingers for too long in your small intestines. That fiber shouldn't linger in the small intestines. It should be swept away into the large intestines where it feeds the bacteria in the colon. When the fiber lingers in the small intestines, it feeds bacteria there and the walls of the small intestines are not designed to handle a bacterial overgrowth. They become weakened, thin, leaky, you get half digested food and bacteria entering your bloodstream from your small intestines. And this is gonna do more harm in spreading inflammation through your brain than good. How would you know that this bacterial overgrowth, it's called SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, is a problem for you? Well, there's a, there's a really clear telltale sign. If you started on this regime and you started to get bloated, but it didn't just pass as a transitional getting used to the regime after a few days, and it started to get worse and worse and worse, stop right there, step back, treat the small intestines, get the motility of your small intestines better so that you can clear the fiber, you don't get a bacterial overgrowth, maybe you need to treat that, and then come back to this treatment. If you already know you have SIBO, then treat that first and then do this. Anyway, that's it. I'm really excited about sharing this with you. I hope that you give it a go and uh, please share it with other people. Give me comments and feedback and let's see what we can do. Bye for now.